Hey everybody, David Shapiro here for part two of my fine tuning tutorial. Um, so just a quick recap. Um, I wrote a script that would synthesize plots. And uh, what I did was I had a, a battery of genres, modifiers, places, and periods. And so what that ultimately was fed into was this prompt here, where I also populated a UUID to add a little bit more entropy. I said, imagine a complete and detailed plot outline for a genre film set in a place during a period. The story should be modifier. And so what that would look like is, um, uh, or what, what the output would look like would look like one of these. So 1922, France, Augustine, a young woman, et cetera, et cetera. So what I did was I generated 396 of these. Um, the minimum for fine-tuning with GPT-3 is 200 samples. Um, and what I promised this, this episode was to, um, to, one, show data augmentation, and two, data prep. So data augmentation in this case is about removing or modifying um, samples that are no good. So I want, to f I want to create something that will take as an input something that looks like this. Genre, crime and mystery, location America, period of the 20s, modifier, tragic and heart-wrenching. Um, that sounds like an awful story, right? Okay, so um, we, will, we, we want to be able to just put in that and it'll synthesize a plot for us. Um, and I can, if I find the, uh, the matching file that has the same name, so America, 1920s, crimes, mystery, tragic, heart-wrenching, we can go see what it found. Um, so it looks like it's the fourth one down if it's in alphabetical order. Um, so the film opens with a shot of the protagonist, a young woman, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the woman's family is grieving her loss, so she died, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so you see this one. This one is is a good length. It's 1,800 characters long. Um, you know the the film ends with the killer being sentenced to life in prison. That's great. It's got the whole plot. However. If we, if we sort our completions by size, um, it just says mismatched. Okay. Uh, oh, and this one, the story is set in Egypt during the Renaissance. So this isn't actually a plot outline. So basically, we don't want to use these samples. These are bad samples. So what we're going to do is, in, in order to augment our data set, I just generated a whole lot more than I'd need. And because length is the primary thing that I want I'm just going to delete the ones that are too short. So any ones that are one kilobyte in length are gone. Ta-da, all done. Um, and don't worry, they're all backed up in Git. So if you want to go look at them, you can. Um, so now I'm left with 202. And the shortest one now is... Um, oh, yeah, no, we don't need that. Um, the shortest one now is... Well, here, let's close these. Uh, don't uh, get rid of those. Just clean it up. Okay. So the shortest one now is, um, you know, uh, is, what is it? It's 1,030 characters long. So it's still a little bit on the short side, but I deleted fully half or almost half of the, of the samples generated. So basically I'm going to say, okay, let's take this behavior that GPT-3 can already do and let's fine tune it for the longer side. Right, and there's all kinds of other things you can do to augment your data, um, but basically these samples all look good. They're a coherent story, so let's just get rid of the ones that I don't want. Um, so that's step one of data augmentation: is get more data than you need and delete the bad samples. Um, that is the easiest way. Another thing you can do, um, and it's way more labor intensive though, is you go in here and you like manually edit one. Um, but I'm not going to do that because that's going to take way too darn long. Um, that's a more advanced uh, data augmentation um, methodology. So I've got another script um, that I reuse from, from, other, uh, from other projects called fine, uh, Prepare Fine Tune Data. We've got to modify this though, because instead of just having one conversation, this was a, this was a script that I used for fine, um, preparing chatbot data. So, but instead we got to pull from prompts and completions because basically we want to we match a prompt that looks like, as you'll recall, this guy to an output to a completion. And so what we'll do is we will say files equals um, OS lister and the source, uh, source dir is actually going to be completions, right? Because if you look at the file count, there's now going to be more prompts. There's 396 prompts 
but there's only um, 202 completions. So I want I don't I, rather than like try and true them up, I'm just going to use this as the single source of truth because there's always going to be a matching um, file with the same name in the prompts. Um, and so then that's where we'll start. And so we'll say, okay, so the files is um, is list in completions. So data equals list uh, is 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 um, empty list. So lines. Uh, I don't think we need to split lines because this isn't chat data. So we're just going to do um, we're just going to do uh, let's see, text equals um, open file. We don't need to split because it's good as it is. Um, and then the prompt is just going to be um, oh here. So this is actually the completion. Um, so then the prompt equals open file, uh, and then we'll have prompter is just going to be prompts. So then we'll say prompter plus file, oops, file, not full, file. There we go. Um, so then info equals prompt, prompt, completion, completion, and um, data append info. And so then with open survey.json-l, we're going to rename this. Um, and so we'll just call this plots.json-l um, as out file. We'll dump it out. And this runs really quick. Um, do a quick time check. We're at six minutes. So as promised, this is going nice and fast. Python, I'll show you what the data looks like in just a second. Um, because it's really important to understand how your data is actually supposed to look. Um, okay, so you see that ran, and there should be a brand new file called plots.json-l. It's 326 kilobytes. It should be 202 lines. So if we go down to the very end, 202 lines, perfect. So let's grab one of these. Well, first, uh, let's do language j.json. So you can see, okay, prompt, here's the prompt, and then here's the completion. So all these prompts and completions are matched up. So basically what we're going to do, and this will be in part three, I'll show you how to actually use a fine-tuned model. Um, how to how to how to actually create it? Um, actually, maybe I'll end this video on creating it, and then part three will be using a fine-tuned model. That sounds that sounds right. But first, let me show you what this looks like. Um, so let's just copy the first one, and we'll do language. Um, actually, no, we won't do. I'll I'll clean this up because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconstruct what it what it actually looks like. So we'll take out. Um, the beginning, and then we'll replace these, the backslash n, because that is going to be um, uh, the, the, the new line character. Um, so let's just replace those, and then we'll take out this middle bit, and then we'll do this. Okay, so basically this is what it looks like. So this will be the input part, and so this is a, is a natural language um, token. It's a demarcator that tells the model, okay, now write me an outline. Um, when you've got when you've got semi-structured or listed data like this, you often don't even need to have a natural language tag like this, but it helps. Um, so basically what you're training the model is so that every time it sees this come out, every time it sees this token, it says, ah, now it's my turn. Um, so this is the input, and then here's the here's the output. Um, so that's that's essentially what it looks like. Now, how do we get this up into um, into uh, OpenAI to actually use it? How do we how do we run the fine tune job? I'm glad you asked. I wrote another uh, script called fine-tune.py. Um, this one it, uh, it's got a, a few canned functions that I use repeatedly. Um, but you just scroll down here to the end. Um, you uncomment these first two. So this uploads your file, and we need to rename this to plots.json-l because that's what we're uploading. So what it does is it uploads the file to your um, to your OpenAI account, gets the response, which includes the, the file ID, and then it does the fine-tune model. Um, so it runs the, runs the command, and if you just um, look up here, fine-tune model, file ID, suffix, model, so on and so forth, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then uh, you've got a label here, a tag. So we're going to just call this um, plot generator. Um, so then what I'll do is I'll run this. So we'll do, oh, got to save it. Um, so then we'll do Python fine tune and it'll, it'll go. 
and you see it spit out a whole bunch of stuff, this is the primary thing we're looking for right here. So my fine tune job is pending. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here after doing a quick recap. And then in the third video, I will show you how to actually use your fine tuned model. Um, do a quick time check, we're at 10 minutes. So just quick recap, um, we generated a whole lot of, of uh, synthetic data with synthesized plots. And then what we did was we generated more than we needed, right? So uh, what, I, what I ultimately did was I deleted all the completions that were too short because I don't want something that's just going to spit out like, you know, a Netflix like movie description summary. No, I want an actual plot, right? And you look at some of these longer ones, like that is a plot. That is an outline. Um, so I deleted all the ones that I don't want so that I'll get more consistent, um, more consistent output. Um, and that is the easiest way to do data augmentation for fine tuning, especially if you're using synthetic data. You just you get you get uh, more samples than you need. You delete the bad ones, and then you you just go with with what you got. Um, it's the lazy man's fine tuning. Um, so that's that's step one. Then we did the fine tuning data, um, which is real simple. It's just a matter of smushing it together um, from two different sources. So I've got identical file names in the completions and the prompts. And so then those are matched up in a file uh, called uh, plots.jsonl, which is here. Um, and so you can see this is the actual, this is the beating heart of a fine-tuned model for GPT-3. And then finally, there's just this quick script that will actually start your fine-tuning job. So there you have it. That is part two of my fine-tuning uh, tutorial series. Um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And then we will see you for part three on using your fine-tuned model. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.